Good afternoon, church. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Pray for me as I'm working my way through some stress. I sit with my oldest brother Monday morning as he lied dead in his bathroom. And I sat with him until the funeral, parlor, funeral home came. Monday evening, my body went through a series of stress, I guess, the shock had come in, and um, I uh, felt numb, my body felt numb, so what I do, in a case like that, I go to my weights and exercise, and I've been training, the funeral is the 31st of uh, this month, so it gave me a little over seven days, you know, to get ready. I've been training since Monday. Hitting the weights real hard, pumping hard, pumping hard, man. Doing my leg exercises, stomach exercises and stuff like that. I may run this weekend. Kind of, you know, it don't take the pain away, but at least what it does, exercise do. Exercise sets your body in a natural uh, setting, so therefore you'll be able to sleep. I've been sleeping real good, you know. So I haven't been uh, feeling any pain in the side, you know. Once I start doing the exercise, the numbness kind of disappeared, you know. Excuse me one second. set your body in a natural setting and that's what we're looking for. So we thank God that he give us energy, you know, and faith without works, you know, you know, the rest of that. He gives us energy so we can continue to go on, you know. We'll push through it. We'll push through it. My text today come from Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 to 6. Praise for God. Praise God for His sovereign work. Church, to understand the book of Ephesians, you must understand the concept of the church as a body of Christ. The revelation that the redeemed or the Lord's body in this world is the central key for understanding the, this great book. As you know, God authorized many metaphors to describe his people. He calls us bride, a family, a household, a kingdom, a flock a vine, a branch, and a building. In Ephesians, Paul introduced the idea that the church is also the body. This descriptive term, church, must completely describe what the church is all about. The body, the, the word body, brings to mind images of unity, diversity, and mutual dependency. In our human body, in every muscle, every bone, every nerve, and every fiber is essential to a proper function of this body. The same is true, church, in the body of Christ. If you come with me or look at 1 Corinthians chapter 18, verse, uh, chapter 12, verse 18, sorry, where it says, But now had God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it had pleased him. Of that same passage, Paul reminds us that we have each been given a unique assignment within the body of Christ, a specific area of service, if you will. Just as your human body allows you to manifest yourself to the world around you, the body of Christ, when it is functioning as it's designed as 
as he designed it to, allows Jesus to manifest himself to the world. Our human bodies receive direction from the head. The brain tells the rest of the body what to do and how to do what is commanded. The same is true, church, of the body of Christ. Jesus, the head of the body, directs the body to carry out his will in the world. When the body is, is of Christ is doing what he designed it to do, it literally allows Jesus to rise up and walk in the world. This picture of the church as the body of Christ is fresh out of the book of Ephesians. Notice this, church. Um, the following verses. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22 to 23. In chapter 2, verse 25 to 16. So, we are his body. He lives, walks, and works through us to accomplish his will in the world today. When we are living to our fullest potential in Jesus' church, he is seen in the world and so are drawn to him. Most of the time, church, when Paul writes about the body, he does so from the perspective of the here and now. He wants us to know who we are and how we are to be functioning in the world today. In these verses, Paul takes us all, all the way back to eternity, to eternity past. He intends to teach us how God formed the church, the church before the world began. Ephesians chapter 1 are one long continuing sentence in the Greek in Greek in the Greek in the original language it is a sentence of some 202 words. In these verses Paul began church to praise the Lord for his grace and salvation and he just keep on ascending the heights of the riches and the glories of God grace. This sentence is literally loaded with theological truth. We can study these verses for a lifetime and never mind out all the nuggets of truth that are buried here. As it is, we will spread several weeks, spend several weeks church trying, just trying to get a basic understanding of these timeless eternal truths. Church, I do not intend to be in a hurry. Uh-uh. Can't be in a hurry. God, I hope you aren't either. These verses, church, takes us into eternity past and reveal how the Lord formed this church before the world began. Thy, they teach us about God's eternal purpose. In salvation, these verses remind us one essential, enormous, important truth. They remind us that we are not an afterthought. We are not just some individuals who had the good sense to call on Jesus one day for salvation. No. These verses teach us that we have been on God's heart for a long time. These verses teach us that we are important to Him. Lots of people, church, are looking for self-esteem in the wrong world. They are, uh, they are always looking for some way, church, to see that their life has meaning. So, some people turn to books and seminars trying to find out how to be somebody. Others attach themselves to people who are already somebodies so they can be somebody too. Others follow the lives of people they believe are somebody, hoping that they can be somebody because they live uh, through somebody who is already somebody in their view. Others reach back into their genealogy to find ancestors who are somebody so they can believe they are somebody because they are related to somebody 
who was somebody at some time. Others seek for self-worth and religion. They work in their church and do all kinds of things hoping someone will notice and pat them on the back and give them accolades for all they do. That makes them feel like somebody, church. Church, you will never find your self-worth playing little mind games like that. If you want to find self-worth, church, look no further than your position in Jesus. When you come to understand that you have chosen, that you were chosen in Jesus, by Jesus Christ, who uh, before the foundation of the world, that understanding will do much for your self-worth and your self-esteem. Think about it, church. If you are saved, right, God picked you out before the foundation of the world. He placed your name in the Lamb's book of life for the for the made for the made before he made the world. He chose you. I don't understand why. I don't understand how. I don't I do not have all the answers to all the questions that arise. But I still rejoice in it because I know it is true. I know it's true, church. God chose me, and that makes me somebody. That brings me to the text I want to begin to move through today. We are studying verse 3 to 14. We are going to be studying one long anthem of praise. Paul praises God for his sovereign work in election. He praises God for his saving work in redemption. He praises God for his sharing work and giving us an inheritance in Jesus Christ. Let's begin, church, to look at the verses we have read as our text today. We will be here for a few weeks. So settle in and allow the Lord to teach you this is true. In these three verses, Paul takes us, as I said earlier, into eternity past. He allowed us to witness his sovereign work of God as he made his plans, plans to save the body of Christ. So Paul opens this anthem of praise with praise for God's sovereign work. I want you to see the reasons these verses give us for praising God who chooses, uh, chooses us in Jesus before we ever exist. God, church, is to be praised for his charity. Verse 3 tells us about the blessings we are, we enjoy as the children of God. The fact is we are far weather, far better in uh, Jesus Christ than we can grasp. Being of sound mind and body, I spent it all. He goes on to say that Jesus didn't spend it all. He paid it all. And he let all, all to us. Jesus gave us an incredible treasury, church, of spiritual riches that is ours to draw from. As we pass through this world, this vision, this, uh, 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 this uh, uh, verses introduce us to the wealth and shows us why our sovereign God is worthy to be praised. The source, church, of these blessings the source of our blessings is identified as God. Paul says, Blessed be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word blessed translates a word that means to speak good of Christ. To speak good of. We get our word eulogy from that word. If you have heard a eulogy at a funeral, you have heard time, 
when someone tried to speak good concerning another person. Paul is saying, God is good. How true that is. He is a good God. In Genesis chapter 14, verse 20, Mezekadezer says, uh, And blessed be the Most High God, and every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and such are and such as are in the seas, and all that are in them heard I saying blessing and honor, the glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb for every forever and ever. So from Genesis to Revelation, God is called blessed. Church. We like to say that God is good when things are going our way. Let me just remind you that he is still the same Lord when things seem to be against us, against you, as he is when you are enjoying the best life can offer. Not only is God the, the blessed one, Paul also tells us that he is the blesser. He says, who had blessed? All the blessings we enjoy in this life come to us from the hand of God above. Even when we think things are bad, God has a way of turning things out for our good. God is good and, dem and he demonstrates that goodness so his children be uh, uh, by he, he, he demonstrate this, that goodness to his children by, uh, by being good to them. He is, uh, he is blessed and he is the blesser. When Paul says, blessed be God, he is praising God for the blessings that, is, that he's given his children. This just reminds us that our God is worthy of praise all the time. Church, think about this. Most of the things we do in our faith, we do because we have been commanded to do them. We attempt worship, we tithe, we witness, and we pray. Is that right, church? As all as acts of obedience. When we take the time to open our mouth and praise the Lord, we are giving Him the offering of, of love. There are few, there are very few things that can offer the Lord to praise Him for His goodness in our lives. But we can all give Him praise for His blessings and His grace in our lives. Our words are sanctified that are pleasing to the Lord. Church, in the Old Testament, they had what was known as free will offerings. This was an offering given to the Lord by someone just because they love Him. They would bring their, their sacrifices to the Lord and offer it up freely because they were moved with the overwhelming love for the God of their salvation. That same kind of offering is still in order today. It is an offering that he will accept. Accept, I beseech thee, the free will offering of your mouth, O Lord, and teach me thy judgment. The subject of these blessings, Paul says that God had blessed us the us Paul is referring to are the saints and the faithful. He mentioned in verse 1, the, recip the recipients of God's blessings are those he has saved by his grace. Our blessings to him are the words we say. His blessings to us are the deeds he performed in our lives. When Paul says that God had blessed us, 
It is the same word that is used about him. In other words, church, God has has uh, has good thoughts toward his people. Oh yes, church. The tense of the verb here suggests that God is always thinking good thoughts toward his children. Those good thoughts translate into good deeds in your life and mine. Church. So because we are his and because we love him, because he loves us, he pours his blessings in our lives. It is incredible when you stop to think about it because God has chosen to save us. He chosen also, he cho chooses to also bless us for his glory. Church, it is amazing to think about all the saints of God possessed in him. He loved us. He chose us in Jesus, and he bestowed every good gift upon us. He, he blessed us in ways far greater than we can imagine. Think about, church, who we are and all that he has done for us in Jesus Christ. He did it all. He provided it all for us. And still, he blessed us in Jesus. He blessed us in ways far greater than we deserve. He is so good to us. And we are absolutely unworthy. We should praise him for his wonderful grace, gifts, and blessings. The scope of these blessings, church, all spiritual blessings. The word all means total, whole of every kind. In other words, church, God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. We have been given everything God has to offer. And when we come to faith in Jesus, God opened the treasure house of heaven and authorize us to receive unlimited spiritual resources. The redeemed have at their disposal church all the spiritual wealth of heaven. God has blessed us over and above every, anything that we desire, that we deserve. Some people with the charismatic mindset will come up and ask have you received the second blessing? I always say yes and the 10,000 too. God's blessing is our in our lives no, no boundaries church. He just keeps blessing and blessing and blessing give, giving us love joy, peace grace mercy and hope and countless other blessings beside. Thank God for his boundless blessing in our lives. Church, the sort of uh, the, the sort of these blessings, Paul tells us that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings. The word spiritual translate the Greek word in the New Testament, this word is always used to refer to the word of the Holy Spirit. So, this verse is saying that, that God has given to us everything that the Spirit of God can deceive, can deliver to us. Everything we can possibly uh, need or, or want has been dis dispensed to us through the work of the Spirit of God in our lives. We are rich in spiritual resources and we do not even realize it. According to, according as his divine power have given us, given unto us all things that pertain unto life and good godliness. Through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. 
Paul calls what we possess in the Christ the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. We are rich in all spiritual blessings, church. Sadly, we don't always appreciate what he has in Jesus. In fact, church, we spend a lot of time asking for things that we have, that he has already given us. We pray for love when God says that his love is, sh is shared abroad in our heart. We pray for peace when Jesus has already said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the word giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. We pray for joy when the Bible tells us plainly that we have joy unspeakably and full of glory. Tell us that these things are the fruit of the Spirit in our lives when He is, is in us. He will produce these things as we, are, as we abide in Christ. Church. That's not all. No. We pray for strength to do the things God has called us to do. When He already told us that we can do all things through Christ who strengthen us. We worry over our needs when the Lord has already promised to meet them. He said that he would supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We seek his presence when he has said I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. We think we we think we need a lot of things we don't have. In truth, we possess great riches that we have never tapped into. Church, may the Lord help us to supply this to simply take him at his word and lay hold on the spiritual blessings we already possess already possess in Jesus. Our material resources are limited regardless of how much you may have materially. Church, you don't do not have have it all. Every one of us, church, could come to the end of our financial material resources in one day. During these dark financial day times, when funds are limited, we have to use what we have wisely. If we do not, it will quickly vanish away. In Jesus Christ, the saints of God, more than we could spend a thousand lifetimes. We do not have to be frugal with his blessings, but we should spend all we can while we are here for his glory, the storehouse of these blessings. Paul says that our blessings are located in heavenly places. Some people think this means that we have, uh, that what we have is in heaven. In truth, it means that, that our blessings are in the supernatural realm. Remember our, remember church, our blessings are spiritual blessings. They are supernatural in nature. Church, think of it this way. When we get saved, we become citizens of heaven. We live here, but we also live there. We are passing through this world. We do not belong here anymore. Our hearts are no longer here. Our desires are no longer here. Our actions are no longer here. The actions of the world, of this world. We are literally people who live in two worlds at the same time. Church, we live on the earth, but we commune with God in His supernatural realm. We are strangers and pilgrims. 
in this world. But we long for that one. Our friends and families are there. Our mansions are there. Our thrones are there. Our God and our saviors are there. So, we live in this world and we long for that world. That is why Paul could say, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. And we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not despair. Prosecuted, but not forsaken church. Cast down, but not destroyed. Paul understood, church, that we often forget. He understood that in uh, Jesus, we are wealthy beyond belief. We merely need to, to appropriate the things we have been given in Jesus and use them for the glory of God. Church, I can read the Bible and see I have, see what I have in Jesus. I can read it and understand that I have a heavenly place. But my problem is getting those things here where I need them. The way we are, with the way we bring those blessings into our lives is by simply yielding to the Spirit of God in our lives. We are allowed, as we allow the Spirit of God to fill us and use us, He produces all the spiritual blessings of heaven in our souls. We are rich in Jesus as we lay hold on those riches by walking in the power of the Spirit of God. The state of these blessings. Why has God given such great and wonderful blessings to the likes of you and me? He does it only because we are in Christ. When a person comes to Christ, when a person comes to faith in Jesus Christ, church, that person, that person is brought into a wonderful union with Jesus. But, he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. When we meet Jesus, we become one with Jesus. As a result, everything that belongs to him now belongs to us. The spirit itself breathes witness, bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with them, that we may be also glorified together. Church, think about it. We are in Christ. Is that right? That means where he is, we are. And had raised us together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Oh, I love that. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. What he does, we do. What he possess, we possess. His privileges are our privileges. Everything Jesus has, the redeemed saints of God have. We have it a lot because we deserve it. But we have been given these things because of his work in our hearts and lives. We have been brought into such a close fellowship with Jesus that he shares everything he has with us. We don't deserve it, no. We, 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 we sure didn't earn it, no. Everything was given to us was given as a free gift of his grace. In my conclusion, church, that is a lot of information. 
but it it all just reminds us how truly blessed we are in Jesus Christ. If we are in Christ today, you possess, if you are in Christ today, you possess all spiritual blessings in Him. If that is your condition today, you should come before Him and thank Him for what He has given you in Jesus. When you come before Him, you should also ask Him to help you walk in the Spirit so that you can lavishly spend everything He has given you in Jesus. Then you should get up and go out into the world living out His, his will and walking in His ways. If you are not in Christ today, and he is calling you to come to him. You should obey that call and come to Jesus for salvation. I can promise, I can promise you that you will not have trouble. But I cannot promise you that you will have trouble. But I can promise you that you will enjoy spiritual riches beyond all deception. Church, if this message has been a blessing to you, find yourself a five based church and become a part of the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, let this church, or let every church, or let everybody say these magical, uh, say that magical word, which is, Amen, Amen, Amen. God bless you, God bless you.